pine tree and they grow in dry forests all the way from southern British Columbia down to southern California and New Mexico. They border desert areas because they are really good at finding and conserving water. Uh, Ponderosa pines are able to close their leaf pores to prevent evaporation and they really prioritize deep tap roots. Scientists have looked at baby ponderosa pines and in the first year they might only be about three inches tall but have a 24 inch long tap root. So they're really good at accessing water. If you're trying to identify them, the bark is this orange brown color uh, and they have these kind of deep fissures around the bark and it often flakes off into these puzzle piece shaped little bits here. And you can see those scattered around the bottom. Needles were five to eight inches long. Uh, and they were sometimes used in basketry. They grow in groups of three, uh, but if you're east of the continental divide, you'll find them in groups of two. It has a really broad crown and it can be kind of flat topped as opposed to more pointy trees. And the canopy is kind of open and the branches are well spaced, so a lot of light comes through. They have abundant pine cones. When the pine cones are fresh on the tree, they're about three to five inches long and they're egg shaped and a purple color, which you really only get to see if the squirrels knock them off. When the cones dry out, they kind of become more spherical and the scales flex open and you can see that each scale has a pointy little prickle on it. So that can be an identifying factor. These trees are really well adapted to fires. Uh, they would commonly live to about 500 years old when fires were coming through because other trees can't withstand the extreme temperatures quite as well. They almost ensured frequent burning by dropping all of these dry pine needles and their pine cones and that would keep other species down and let them continue to inhabit an area. The trunks and the limbs were used as building material and firewood. The gum was used in salves or ointments and the needles could be boiled to make a solution for cough or fever. The seeds were eaten and the dried pitch uh, could be chewed as gum. The pitch often smells like vanilla too, so sometimes you can identify the tree by smelling it. And let's go look at a cool thing over here. In the springtime, bitter root Salish women would sometimes harvest the inner bark, uh, which was really sweet. And to do that, they would take axes or sharpened sticks and chop off the outer bark so you could access the inner bark and it would leave these oval scars here and it didn't harm the tree. This old tree is still growing and thriving but uh, pretty cool. It would eat the inside.